What's up, my stat stars? Michael Princhak here, ready to talk to you about standard deviation and standard error when you're working with inference for proportions. There's lots of different formulas. A lot of kids use the wrong form in the wrong place, and it gets a little bit confusing. So let's try to explain it. This right here is the standard deviation for a sampling distribution of sample proportions. Remember, when you build a sampling distribution for sample proportions of the same sample size taken from the same population, well, there's tons of sample proportions, so they're definitely going to vary. This is the standard deviation for all of those different sample proportions. It explains how they're going to vary. Now, when you're working with the difference between two sample proportions, this is the standard deviation. Okay, now look at these formulas. They require that you know the true population proportions. If you're working with just one population, P is the population proportion. You need to know it to use that formula. Here, we're working with two population proportions, and you need to know both of them. So if you know both population proportions or just one of them, these are the formulas to use so you can build that sampling distribution. But when we move to inference, inference is the idea that we don't know what's true about the population. We only know what's in our sample, and we're going to use our sample to make a judgment about that population proportion. So that's where we fall into standard error. When you're building a confidence interval for a population proportion, that means you have no idea what the population proportion is. That's why you're building a confidence interval to try to estimate it. Now, that's where we got to use standard error. Notice it's the exact same formula. The only difference is we don't know what P is, so we have to use our sample proportion P hat in its place. No big deal. These two formulas are on the AP stats formula sheet. However, some people don't call it SE. That's what I use for standard error. Some people just use S for the standard error. However you want to say it, it's the same thing. Now, same thing. When you're trying to build a confidence interval for the difference between two population proportions, you don't know what those two population proportions are. All you have is the sample proportion from the first population and the sample proportion from the second population. Again, you're going to use standard error. Notice it's the exact same formula, but we're replacing the true population proportions, which we don't know, with the P hats, the sample proportions from population one and population two. This is awesome. So again, these standard error formulas are used when you're working with confidence intervals because you don't know what those P's are. Now, when you're doing a one sample Z test for a population proportion, that's when you have a null hypothesis. And that null hypothesis, you have to assume to be true. So in that null hypothesis, for example, maybe you have a null hypothesis that the true population proportion is 25%. Well, if you are assuming that that is the true population proportion, this is what you should be using when you develop that standard deviation. Because again, we're saying that we do know what the true population proportion is, even though we think it might be less or more. We have to assume this is true. So that's why we go back and we do use standard deviation. We're working with a one sample Z test. Now, what about a two sample Z test? Now, in a two sample Z test, your null hypothesis is that the first population proportion is equal to the second population proportion. We don't know what they are. We just think that they're the same. 20%, 20%, 30%, 30%, 27%, 27%. We don't know what they are. We just think they're the same. So we can't use this formula because we think they're the same, but yet we don't know what they are. So we still don't know what to put here. Now, we could use this formula right here for our two sample Z tests. And that actually would probably be okay. It's not correct, but you probably could get a lot of credit on the AP exam for that. But what we should be doing is assuming that the two populations proportions are the same. Well, the idea is if we're assuming they're the same, then why are we even looking at two different samples? They're all the same, right? So let's combine our two samples together and we get what we call P hat combined, or we just use P um, C there, just a little, little C for combined, or some teachers call it pooled. You're pulling them all together into the same group. Now, all you got to do is put all of your samples together in the denominator, n1 plus n2, all of your successes together in the numerator, x1 plus x2, and you're going to get one giant sample proportion. Instead of looking at them both separately, remember, you're assuming that they're the same. So when we do that, we use what we call standard error combined. It's the standard error using that standard deviation formula, but we're using our p hat combined. So here is that formula for the standard error combined. This is what you use in a two sample Z test. You put your P hat combined here, one minus your P hat combined, and then you do the exact same thing over here. So these numerators are going to be identical, but the denominators are different. You got your sample size one and your sample size two.
So these are the five different formulas for standard deviation slash standard error when you're working with proportions. You just got to be careful that you use the right ones. These two can only be used if you know the true population proportion. In most cases, we don't. But if you do, gosh, please use them. Again, that's why in a one sample Z test, we do use this because we assume we know that that population proportion is. But in confidence intervals, when you have no idea what the population proportions are, you got to go ahead and use the standard error formulas. Good news is they're the exact same formulas, just replacing those P's with P hats. And then in a two sample Z test, well, we have to assume that there's no difference between the two proportions. So combine them all together, and we use that combined value to calculate our standard error. Not too bad. Take your time with it. Hopefully it's pretty simple. But at the end of the day, all of these formulas are on the AP sets formula sheet. You just got to know you when to use which one. All right, best of luck.